Hi guys and welcome back to another week of Real Love. Oh, how are you going, John? I've had a great week, Jackie. How about you? I've had a really good week. How have you gone showing people different random acts of kindness to show God's love? Really, really good. This week, I helped my daughters sand back their beds and help them to repaint it. We've had lots of fun doing it. Oh, How about you? That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I had a really good week trying that out too. I helped my grandparents with a few things that they couldn't do and it felt really good to do that as well. So we'd actually love to hear how you guys at home are going, showing God's love through random acts of kindness as well. Anyways, for today, what are we looking at, John? We have another really big day, Jackie. We're going to get straight into the Bible in a minute and we're going to learn all about how showing God's love can be really hard for us sometimes. Fantastic. Now, what does it mean that God's love can be really hard for us sometimes? Well, sometimes, you know, like when you're doing stuff for your brothers or your sisters, you don't quite feel like doing that act of kindness. And sometimes, you know, it's just a little bit hard and you've just got to get in there and do it. Yeah, that sounds so true. I can, sometimes it does feel a bit like that. So I cannot wait to hear all about our story this week and learn a bit more about that. So. Well, we're going to jump into some worship right now. Yes. And then we're going to get more into the story. So we'd love you to join us. Jump up where you are and we're going to sing and dance and praise God. Fantastic. Here we go. When I'm worried, when I mess up, when people count me out, I may stumble, then I'll get up, nothing can keep me down. Cause I know who you say I am, you say I am yours. It doesn't matter what I feel, in you I am secure. I will trust in you, don't have to worry anymore Cause I am yours, I am yours Cause I am yours, I am yours I won't hide when I'm afraid No matter what I face I am strong and I am brave I can't do anything Cause I know who you say I am You say I am yours It doesn't matter what I feel In you I am secure I will trust in you Don't have to worry anymore Cause I am yours I am yours Cause I am yours I am yours when I fall down, I'll get up In all your love, I can't get enough You are strong, and you are Lord And I am brave, cause I am yours When I fall down, I'll get up In all your love, I can't get enough You are strong, and you are Lord And I am brave, cause I am yours Cause I know who you say I am You say I am yours It doesn't matter what I feel In you I am secure I will trust in you, don't have to worry anymore Cause I am yours, I am yours Cause I am yours, I am yours Cause I am yours, I am yours You love 
Good morning, guys. Welcome to our story today. I hope you've had a great time. It's a great worshiping God. I hope you've been jumping up and down, having a great time doing that with your family. Today for our story, we're going to head to Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 48. So in my Bible, that's over two pages, but it's only 10 verses. And this is listening to what Jesus has to say. Just to set the scene for you, Jesus is sitting up on the top of a mountain and people are gathering around to hear his words. Wouldn't you love to do that? Wouldn't you love to hang around and listen to what Jesus had to say? I'd imagine Jesus saying some really nice things, you know, like be kind to others and, you know, maybe he'd say some things that make you all feel warm and cozy. Some of the things that Jesus said though, were really hard. They weren't easy at all. And even though we're going to read one of those passages today, I want you to know that because Jesus said it, it's the best way to live our life. Because Jesus is the one that shares his heart and God's heart for all of us. So it's in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 38 through to verse 48. This is what we read. You have heard the law say that punishment must match the inquiry, an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. And then Jesus says this, But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the cheek, let them have the other cheek as well. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give them your coat as well. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it for two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard the law say, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In this way, you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both evil and the good. And he sends his rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for you? Even corrupt tax collectors do that. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even the pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What an amazing thing Jesus said. He said that you've heard that if someone does something bad to you, you do something bad to them. If someone punches out your eye, you can take out their eye. And then Jesus says, but I have a new way for you, for you to live, a new way that is kind to others. 
We have to remember that all of this, what Jesus said, is based in God's heart. You see, we don't deserve God to be kind to us, do we? If you think about the things that you do that you shouldn't do, imagine if God did that to you. And Jesus says in the same way that the rain comes on those who are good and the rain comes on those who are evil, our goodness should be evident to everyone, that we can share that goodness with all the people around us, no matter what they do. You know, even when it gets hard, even when God asks us to love people where it's really hard to love them, that's when we should love them the most because that's what God does with us. You know, we've been learning about real love and we want to keep emphasizing to you that real love is not just something that you have in your mind. It's something that you live out in your life. I want you to imagine for a moment that someone does something that's not very nice to you. Maybe they take your favorite seat. Maybe they hang out with a friend that normally you would hang out with. Maybe they take something that belongs to you. Maybe they stick their tongue out at you. Imagine something that someone could do towards you. Now I know deep within us, we want to get them back, right? We want it to be even. They were mean to me, now I can be mean to them. Now I want you to imagine that you don't do that. Imagine that you give them the same love that God gives to you. Not because they deserve it, but because God deserves it. This is the thing about real love, that when we receive God's love in our heart, we can give it to others. You wanna know something really cool? I didn't pay anything for God to love me. For me, it was absolutely free. It cost God something, don't get me wrong. It cost Jesus his life on the cross. He gave us all of his love and he paid for the things that I've done wrong. In the same way, I can offer that same love even to the people that are mean to me, even to the people that don't show love to me. I'm gonna set a challenge for you this week. Wherever you go this week, maybe hanging out with your family at home, maybe you're going to get frustrated because you can't go out like you normally would over the holidays. I'm going to give you a challenge to love even when it's the hardest. Can you do that this week? Because I know when you love like that, then God's Spirit is right there giving you the strength to love in that way. Let's do that this week, shall we? Love how God loves. Let's do that together. What does the Bible say about how we should treat our enemies? All right, guys, welcome back. Now, I have the wonderful Erin here today who's going to help me answer some of these questions. So, let's get straight into it. Let's get into it. First question is, what does the Bible say about how we should treat our enemies? What do you think, Erin? Well, it actually says that we should love our enemies. Love them. Love them. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? it and is. not always easy to do. No, definitely not. <laughs> How does loving our enemies show that we are God's children? So our next question is, how does loving our enemies show that we are God's children? Do you know what? This is a really, really cool question to think about. You see, sometimes when we are Christians, we are actually called to go against the grain. And what that means is that loving our enemies is actually not something that everybody does. But being a Christian and being in God's family, He calls us to love everybody. And so sometimes 
that's a little bit different. So by loving our enemies or by loving people who are maybe not as kind to us, it shows that we belong to God's family. It's pretty cool, hey? It's very cool. How did you guys at home go with that one? Should we only love those who are kind to us? Why or why not? Question three said, should we only be loving to those who are kind to us? What do you think, Erin? Well, the Bible actually says that we should love everybody. Everyone? Even those who are mean Whoa. to us. Everybody. Wow. And do you want to know why? Always. Because Jesus loved everybody. When we look at the Bible where Jesus was here, he went to those who were mean, he went to wow. those who were not very nice people, and he showed so much love and care for them as well. What an encouragement, but mm. also, what a challenge. Mm. Read Romans 12, 20 to 21. What are some ways you can heap burning coals of kindness onto someone this week? So after we've read the Bible verse in Romans, mm -hmm. what do you think are some ways that we can heap burning coals of kindness on someone? What a great question. But I think the first thing we need to do is understand what it's talking about when it's saying heap burning coals. Like it's not talking about, you know, starting a fire and go and get the burning coals out of that and put that on someone. That would be very dangerous. But what it is talking about, Erin, is have a think what it's like if I was being really, really mean to you and really, really mean to you, and then instead of being mean back to me, you were super kind to me. Hmm. What do you think that would do to me? You would be like, what is happening? You'd be so shocked because you wouldn't expect me to be kind to you if you're not being kind to me. Exactly. I would probably be quite confused. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about heaping burning coals on it, it's about, you know, lumping on kindness and I guess being a little bit unexpected in our response back to those people. So what are some ways that we could show kindness or heap burning coals on someone even when they haven't been kind to us? Well, maybe we could return kind words to them. So instead of yelling and being like, stop it, you could be like, it's okay. I understand that you're not feeling really happy right now. That would be so confusing. What do you think, Erin? Is there a way that we could respond with kindness instead? I think being extra generous to someone mm. would be really cool. And maybe if someone's asking a lot of you or they keep asking questions, instead of being like, oh, I don't want to answer another mm. question, you could just be overly generous and give more than what they ask of you. That's a fantastic idea. I would love to hear what you guys at home came up with for that one. Why do you think God wants us to love our enemies? All right, guys, so the next question is, why do you think God wants us to be kind and to love our enemies? Well, first of all, that's because that's what he asks of us. Mm, that's and true. as his children, his people, he asks us to obey what he has said. So he wants us to show extra love and extra kindness. Mm. Because when you walk past and you see someone who's being really generous and really kind, it actually shows that we are his children and that we are his people. That's right, and it brings glory back to God, doesn't yes. it? Which is what we want. Yeah. Awesome. Describe a time when it might be hard to love someone. So for 
our next question, Megan, could you describe a time where it might be really hard for you to show love to someone? Yeah, so I think there were lots and lots of different examples that we could use for this one, but one that I was thinking about, which maybe you might connect with at home, is, you know, especially when I was growing up and I would make a bad choice, my parents or my mum and dad would often have to kind of tell me off. And right in that moment, when they're telling me off and correcting me, it was really hard for me to be like, oh, I love you so much because I was feeling frustrated or a little bit upset at that moment. Mm -hmm. What about you, Erin? Has there been a time where it's been hard for you to, you know, love someone in that moment? Yeah, definitely. I think about growing up with siblings. Lots of us have siblings. Mm, and that's true. Siblings get into arguments quite often. That always happens in a family. And I know sometimes if my brother's not being very nice or he's not being very fair, I don't want to stand there and tell him how much I love him. That's mm. really, really hard. That's true. What about you guys? When has it been really hard for you to treat someone with that love and kindness? How can you still show God's love and kindness in that situation? All right, guys, so the final question for today is, in that situation that we thought of before when we might be feeling a little bit frustrated or it might be hard to love someone, how can we still show God's love and God's kindness to that person in that situation? Erin, you spoke a little bit about what it can be like growing up with a sibling. How can you show love and kindness back to your sibling? Well, I think one of the best things to do is to be really calm and to talk to them kindly, even if they're not talking to you mm, kindly. That's true. And I think to definitely show love with the way you respond. So try not to argue back and to mm. yell back, but just to be really friendly and kind. That's such a great idea. And, you know, I was thinking a little bit more about what I can do in that situation, you know, when my parents were correcting me or telling me off, because I think for me, it's about growing in my understanding. Because the only reason that our parents do that is to help us learn, to help us make better choices next time. So I think I can be patient. And I think a big part of that is me learning to say sorry when I have made a mistake and, you know, accept responsibility. But also, maybe a bit later on when I'm feeling a little bit better, is to actually thank my parents because, you know, they love us so much and all they want is for us to be able to grow into better people and into the people that God created us to be. Yeah. Very good. Well, thanks so much, guys, for joining us. We hope you had a great time chatting about these questions too. Alright guys, just a few quick announcements for you this week. Some really exciting things happening. Firstly, this Thursday night, especially as ever as our holidays have now been extended a little bit, we are going to have another special edition of Family Games Night. This is a really fantastic time to join together with other families and leaders and really have a great time. So Thursday night at 6 o'clock, I would love to see you there. For more information, check out our Facebook groups for the Zoom post and everything to join in that fun. Also, the craft video for this week will be available at the end of Kids Today. So you'll be able to watch that and it will also be posted in our Facebook group. We hope you guys are enjoying your holidays and we've even had a few of you send in some photos of your holiday highlights and your craft. So don't forget to stay tuned and you might even spot you in this next section. If you wanna see yourself next week, don't forget to upload a photo to our Facebook groups as well. Thanks so much, guys.
Wow, kids, it's been great to learn about how we can show God's love even when it's really hard. It really has, John. Has there been a time when someone has been mean to you? And have you been able to show God's love to them even after they've been unkind to you? There has been, Jackie. I remember once when I was little, back at school, there was someone who said something really mean and nasty to me, and it was really hard for me for a long time to be able to talk to them. But slowly God helped me, and I was able to talk to that person again and be their friend. Wow, that's fantastic. And it can be something that's really tricky throughout all of our lives, not even just when we're little, but when we're grown-ups like us and like our parents. But with God on our side, He's always there to help us and help us through that, even with mean people. You're right, Jackie. It's been so much fun this week and it's been great having you with us. I can't wait to have you back next week and we can learn more about real love and what God has for us. Oh, I cannot wait either. So we'll see all you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
His holy 